May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our salvation. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. This, this Mark reading is so sad. <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, it really is sort of this sad reading about the beheading of, of John the baptizer. Um, but I wanted to talk to you this morning about what I, what I talked to the children. And we, we need to start with Amos. And, and Charles read Amos so perfectly. I know the names are hard, and I do apologize. Um, but there's, there's a point to where God is in our lives. He set a plumb line. And if those of you have ever done surveying or construction, a plumb line is a line that's completely level, it's completely straight. It's a perfect starting point, OK? Now, if you start with a bad foundation and you build a house on sand, I don't care how good the plumb line is, it's going to settle. We see that in this building where, you know, Georgia sand and water running underneath. Poor Charles is running around patching mortar, and George is running around patching mortar, fixing cracks with the foundation settling. But it's straight. We look good. That's all that matters, right? But that plumb line is, is Jesus Christ. That plumb line is his life lived. This is your starting point as to where you should build from. It's like I tried to explain to you the past few weeks, the foundation, that starting point, is all where we got to come from. But then Paul comes in with this letter from Ephesians. Now, for those of you that like Guinness Book of World Records and trivia, and that might be fun one night, we may do Paris Trivia Night, and we'll play for Goofy Prize or something like that. But, but this is in the Guinness Book of World Records right here, this reading, as the longest sentence. The longest sentence. Now, in the Greek, it's 154 words. Now, for you English teachers out there, I know you can already pick at this grammar saying, well, this is a run-on sentence. He forgot a subject line here. And this should be in the nominative. That should not be in the genitive. And I, <laughs> I had to translate this from Greek in seminary. I had to do the whole book of Ephesians. So I understand the power of this writing. But Ephesians 1, 3 through 14 is about who we need to be. Now, I am not of the lifestyle, nor am I of the belief, nor am I of the anything that our life is all about predestiny. I do not believe that. And I'll tell you why I don't believe that, because Genesis 2, free will always hits in. But I am of the belief of what Paul said here that we are predestined, that God calls us to, and we choose which path on our free will. If our life was based on a lot of Calvinistic type beliefs where it's all about predestination, then we're just puppets that God says, okay, move right hand, move right hand back. But we're not. We're given free will to choose. And I think the best example of this in, in modern literature, if you want to call the 1540s modern literature, is that story, Pilgrim's Progress. Our life is about to show God's glory. He chose us for a certain time, and we choose the path. And the whole time, as Pilgrim is progressing toward that narrow gate, he's given choices that are about his glory, and choices that are about God's glory. You remember that one famous line in there for those of you that are blessed to read it. If you haven't read it yet, buy this book. If you were stuck on a desert island and you had five books to bring, Shades of Grey would not be one of them. <laughs> Pilgrim's Progress would definitely be one of them. The man was illiterate. All he knew was the King James Bible. And he was able to put this book together while he was a prisoner in an English jail to put this story together. The story is about Scripture and our choices, our predestination. God knows what our time is going to be at the end. And the whole time, he wants us to get to that narrow gate. But we get in the way. We get in the way. 
God never puts an obstacle before us. He puts something before us that shows his glory. We seem to choose what's about our glory. It's not about us. The faster we realize that, the easier it is. So predestination, I look at the way Paul is presenting it here, is that it is a set goal that God has for us to be perfected. And, and he even goes into the point of saying it in the ultimate purpose is our praise of God. And that's what we hear on Sunday mornings about, isn't it? We're here to praise God together. To learn more about him, but to praise him. I mean, that's why we open the service with blessed be God. We're, we're saying what we're here for. We want to bless you, God, for what you've done to us, for what you've blessed us. I look at my own life and predestination and say, I was predestined to be a priest. I chose my Jonah moment to stay away and say no. That was my choice. That was about my glory. And as the famous Ray Charles said, if I knew I was going to live this long, I would have taken much better care of myself. <laughs> the same thing would have been held true if I had followed what God had called me originally to be a priest. I wonder where I would be. Now, some may say that, well, you're created by your environment and how many different things you've learned as being a Marine or being a lifeguard or being what has made you where you are. Oh, that's true. That's now, looking at it from a now perspective. But what would have happened if I had listened to God as a child and kept going and became a priest right away instead of going off on my own? That's how you have to look at your lives. You have to look at your everyday being. How are you going to show God's glory in whatever you do today? Because you're given a choice. As scripture says, I give you a choice today, life or death. I give you a choice. Do you want to choose to put your glory up first or God's glory? Satan will always tempt you to go your glory first because that's going to be easiest. That's going to make you look the best. You see that what's happened with our denomination. We've chosen where it's about. Is it about God's glory or is it about our glory? That's the reality. But you, you are predestined to be here on Sunday morning. I hate to tell you this. You can think in the back of your head saying, well, I made this choice. Yes, you did. But you made this choice because you knew it would be for God's glory that you were here. Rather than, like I used to do, and go stay in on Sundays at St. Celia's of Simmons. <coughs> or St. Postopedic. <laughs> I made a choice to be a priest. I made a choice to be here today to give thanks to God for what he's done for me. It's not about my glory. It's about his glory. And it's by his strength I'm up here right now because those of you that have been through what I've been through, you know you wouldn't be up here right now either. The same thing has got to be about you. It's not about you. It's not about you. All right? Repeat that. It's not about you. It's about God. So allow his glory to be shown to whoever you meet today. It could be a checkout girl at Walmart that's having a hard day. It could be a young woman that as you're going to public, she doesn't have enough money to pay for her food. It could be somebody broken down on the side of the road. I know that's scary. But pick up the phone and call 411 or whatever it is and, and get somebody to help them. You see what I'm saying? It's, it's not about you. It's about how are you going to take the gift that God has given you of his grace. As we talked about last week, his grace is beyond what you are. And how are you going to show that to the rest of the world? That's your predestination. That's how on Pilgrim's Progress you get to that narrow gate. Always following what God wants in the long over what you want. Because eventually you're going to be at such a mind with God that you're just going to automatically choose God's will because you know it's the best for you. That's the problem. Satan convinced you so often, thinking, now, you're in control. Are you the man? In reality, you're not. 
So as you go through this week, see how God has presented a path before you every day. And mark it down. Mark it down. And choose correctly. Choose wisely, as they said in the, the last crusade of Indiana Jones. Choose wisely. Don't choose poorly. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.